Welcome to Metamorphosis and Basics of Metadata. In this video, I'm going to introduce the basics of metadata. I start with this image, partly because it makes a nice start target, but also because it's what a lot of people think of when they hear about metadata. It has funny words surrounded by angle brackets. Some metadata does look like that, but not all of it. I will explain this in more detail by showing some examples and answering some questions that I've often been asked when people are first starting to learn about metadata. I'll start with, what is metadata? Metadata is any data about data, and there are lots of different types of metadata that can be recorded or assigned in either a digital or analog format for many different purposes. First, there's descriptive metadata. This metadata describes the intellectual content of your data. For example, this photo has a written description on the back, indicating the subject of the photo. That is descriptive metadata. This MP3 file has embedded metadata that indicates the title and artist, and on many devices that data is visible while the song is playing. That is also descriptive metadata. There's also structural metadata. This metadata lays out the different parts of your data and how they are related. For example, the table of contents of a book shows how it is broken up into chapters and sections. That is structural metadata. The file system on your computer has metadata, which stores how all of your files are organized into folders. That is also structural metadata. There's also administrative metadata. This metadata provides information about how to manage your data, such as its technical specifications or any rights associated with it. For example, the FBI warning screen that you must watch for 20 seconds at the beginning of a commercially produced video informs you of your rights regarding public performance and distribution of that video. It's an example of rights metadata, which is a type of administrative metadata. This symbol that appears on DVD containers indicates the region encoding, which lets you know what kind of DVD player you need to view that DVD. This is an example of technical metadata, which is another type of administrative metadata. When you download files from a website, often the site will provide a checksum file, which you can use to confirm locally with your own checksum program that the file you received is 100% the one they intended to provide, not truncated or replaced by hackers during the transfer. Checksums can also be used with your local data to make sure it doesn't change over time. This is an example of preservation metadata, which is another type of administrative metadata. The labels on a filing cabinet may have any of the three types of metadata. They may be descriptive and indicate whether a drawer contains business or personal papers. They may be structural and indicate that the top drawer has folders A through K, while the bottom drawer has L through Z. They may also be administrative and indicate which drawers are private. What does metadata look like? Metadata can be in many formats and vary widely in its structure. Metadata may be the same format as the data itself. For example, a Project Gutenberg ebook may come in many formats, including XHTML, PDF, and spoken word audio, but among these it must include a plain text version. At the top of this plain text is a standardized header added by Project Gutenberg indicating the title, author, release date, and other information. This header is also plain text, so is in the same format as the data itself. Metadata may be in a different format from the data. For example, a WAV audio file digitized from cassette may have an associated text file indicating the content of the original cassette sleeve, the hardware and settings used for digitization. In this case, the metadata is in plain text, which is different from that of the original cassette or the new WAV file. But metadata need not be in text format at all. For example, the first minute or so of an oral history interview may contain metadata describing the interview. This is the first tape of a conversation with Minister Malcolm X June um, 2nd. Metadata need not even be verbal. One example is this microfilm target, which may be filmed along with the microfilm content. The copy on the film provides technical metadata about the quality of the images on the rest of the film. Similarly, this microfilm target may be scanned at the same time that your microfilm is scanned and provide technical metadata about the settings and quality of your scanner to give context to what you see on the scans of your film. Metadata may also vary in how much structure it has. It may have very little structure. For example, I found this written in the front of a book I got at a library book sale. This book I gave to Mary Baxter. After her death, I gave it to Mrs. Sproul. After her death, to Kate Wilson. She never read it, so on a visit to her, I took it back for my own reading. This passage is relatively unstructured, but provides a custodial history for the book, so is administrative metadata. Metadata may have moderate structure. For example, some word processors allow you to set document properties, such as a title or author, and then these fields may be used to search for those documents on your computer. I say this is only somewhat structured because there are only a few fields and you can put anything you want in them, including nothing at all. 
Metadata may have very rich structure, such as in a MARC record. Though such records require expertise to create and interpret, they allow for very detailed searching and interpretation of metadata. By looking at the field tags and indicators, one can tell that this is a record for a book called Abraham Lincoln that is written by Tanya Lee Stone, not the other way around. When is metadata created, and who creates metadata? Here is a schoolbook copy of Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. There is some metadata added by the publisher. It's a brief biography and bibliography of the author printed in the book, so added at the time of publication. There is also some administrative metadata, the custodial history. Each year, the student with the book added their information, as well as their assessment of the book's condition. Years later, the owner of the book registered it with Book Crossing and added some rights metadata declaring that the book was to be picked up freely, read, and then left for someone else to find. So this book has lots of metadata added by different people at different times. Where is metadata? Metadata may be inside the data or part of the data itself. For example, the title page of a book indicates the title, author, date of publication, and so on, and this page is very much a part of the book itself. Many digital file formats also have metadata that sits inside the file, often called header information. You can sometimes see it in there if you just open it up with a text editor like Notepad. Here is an image file that I peeked into, and most of it is binary garbage, but here is a nice little XML file jammed in there that indicates which microfilm the image was scanned from. Metadata can be stored just near the data, such as the title and author printed on the cover or spine of a book. That metadata is not usually considered to be an integral part of the book for cataloging purposes, and is often obscured or replaced when the book is rebound. Though it's not obvious, the name of a file on your computer is also metadata that's stored nearby, part of the file system but not in the file itself. Two files with different names but with the same content can be identical at the bit level, but distinguishable by their addresses in the file system. A file's name even has some structure. By convention, the extension of a file name indicates the file type, such as DOCX for a Microsoft Word document, and the first part may describe the intellectual content of the file, such as its title or author. Metadata can also be gathered elsewhere independently of the data, such as in a card catalog, search engine, or other index. One resource can have metadata in all three places. Here is some microfilm for the newspaper, the Erlington Bee. It has various metadata targets on the microfilm itself that indicate the title, date range, and location of filming. It has more metadata on the microfilm box, which indicates the length and polarity of the film, as well as its assigned call number. The catalog record has even more metadata, such as the publisher of the newspaper, frequency of publication, and location in the library. How is metadata different from just plain data? There's no clear distinction, and one person's metadata is another person's data. For example, in a card catalog, each card has metadata for library resources, and the label on the front of the drawer describes which cards are in the drawer, so that is metadata for metadata. So what is metadata? I hope it's clear now that you already understand metadata and use it every day when you describe the intellectual content, the structure, or the administration of your data, be it books, microfilm, photos, or computer files. Without the metadata, it's just an unknown ball of data, but just a little bit of metadata can turn it into a coherent, searchable collection of valuable information resources.